Okay, welcome back once again to day 57. Uh, today I am continuing my voyage from the previous video, and I am off in search of snow. Uh, it took me a couple days to get back from the last journey, and uh, so and then I wasted a day gathering some wood. Uh, you can see there I got fires burning. I smelted some coal, and now I'm smelting some sand because I was running low on glass. Uh, this is actually my second take at this uh, recording. I, uh, I tried out a new, um, what's it called? A new video editing software called um, uh, Power Director. I can't think of it perfect. There's nothing perfect about it. Um, Power Director by a company from called Cyberlink, and it was a fairly effective and useful. Uh, uh, processing piece of software except that it had extremely limited like saving and conversion capabilities like I've been using Windows Movie Maker and it's you know it's kind of like moron proof it's it's a Windows product it's made to be simple and it works effectively well for what it does but Windows Movie Maker offers you like 28 different ways to save and formats for sizes and adjustments and and you've just got more options when it comes to how you want to save your video. So if you want to compress the shit out of it, you can. Or if you want to leave it completely un uncompressed, you can. So I went to I went through the process, got used to their system, developed the entire... I clipped together the entire movie. I figured out how they worked their fade-ins and fade-outs. And I recorded my full narration. And I interlaced in background music and understood how they work. Because I didn't use Audacity separately for that one. I just used their system. And... I get all the way to the end, I start processing, and it tells me it's going to be 4 gigabytes, and I'm like, wait, what? So, I mean, because I record my videos, and they're about 20 gigabytes, because it's uncompressed fraps video, and it's raw video recorded as it is, so it's, it's you know, it's kind of high on the, uh, on the memory side, which, you know, isn't too big a deal. Uh, since I have plenty of space to spare while I'm recording anyways. It's weird land formation. But, uh, so, I, I, I cancel, I cancel that. And, um, wait, why are, why are those dirt instead of grass? It's weird, I've never been through here. Anyway, uh, so, I checked out all the different options it had, and... It had some interesting features, but it didn't have any way to, like, you know, make a normal AVI. Like, usually when you make an AVI, especially a 60, uh, 640 by 480, which is what mine are, um, you're looking at about, um, it works out to between 5 and 10 megabytes per minute, uh, depending on your compression ratios. Ooh, there's snow. Nice. And it's just the general average, you know. You get like a um, a ninety minute movie will generally be around, you know, seven hundred to nine hundred megabytes. You know, it works out to about eight to, you know, eight to uh, ten or so megabytes per minute, and that's fine. I mean, it's it's it works for me that kind of. Memory compression. I mean, because if you go, but you can go better than that, of course. And you know, like I download anime, and I'll get like thirty-minute episodes of an anime, and it'll be three hundred and fifty megabytes. And so you're looking at like, what is that? Like twelve megabytes or eleven megabytes or something per minute. And you, so, and it's it's a little more memory intense. I like the way you slide on ice. Speaking of ice, um, after I recorded this video, I uh, went and uh, came up with an idea that I wish was implemented in the game, and I went ahead and tweeted it over to uh, Jeb, uh, Jens, anyways, the guy's name, but it's Jeb underscore his tweet thing, so I'm assuming Jens was probably taken, I don't know where Jeb comes about, maybe his initials are J-E-B, um, but uh, I like the idea, like, if you have uh, water, in a uh, snow biome, and you pour it in a mold, uh, it will eventually freeze and turn into a block of ice. 
Uh, you can't pick up ice. It's like glass. Once it's there, it's there. But, and you can't place torches around it because you'll just melt it. Although, I don't know how that responds to solid blocks. I know it affects... I guess it would just turn into a source block of water and it would start flowing. But, um... I like the idea of, like, outside of a snow biome, maybe you could take snow blocks, which I'll be making here shortly once I get my inventory full, which are built by 2x2 two two snowballs, which are the things I'm digging up. Uh, you'll notice I'm also using a shovel. You have to use a shovel to dig snow, otherwise you just destroy it. It's like if you just punch or use a pickaxe, you're just going to destroy the snow. And uh, I think it'd be cool if you could, like, build a mold out of snow and put water in it, and it becomes an ice block. Obviously, of course, you know, once you already have ice, ice itself can serve as one of the other block mold pieces. But, uh, that way you could, like, build structures out of ice outside of snow biomes, which would be kind of cool. Because, uh, it's an underused block. Like, normally ice is just a thin layer. Like, you can see it here, like, as I pan next to this water. It's just a layer, like, on top of the water. Like, the same way the snow is just a layer on top of blocks. But if you have it by itself, an individual source block, and there's no... and the water is below it... Like, if I were to go to that source block next to that ice and pull that water out, it would, um... show that the, the ice will become a full block instead of just being a little lip. Uh, it's still just as fragile, but it, um... It becomes a solid, you know, full square cube block. And, uh, so you can actually build with it if you mold it. And I've seen people do it in the past, and you can only do it in snow biomes currently because of the, the nature of it. But it's one of those handy kind of little things to know. Uh, and it would be kind of fun to be able to build with ice itself because there's just not enough ice building. I thought that'd be kind of cool. But anyway, Power Director, yeah, it wouldn't let me save a small file, so I had to, I, neg I uh, <laughs> got a little disheartened and I just left it alone, and so I haven't bothered to try to re re-record my audio here, because the original audio I had was mentioning all about the features I was using and how the video might be a little different this time, and it did look a little different, it had some fancier effects, and it had some um, video enhancement, which was nice, but uh, it's... You know, the trade-off isn't worth the effort. I mean, because I had to learn new software, and it didn't do exactly what I wanted to do right away, so it just wasn't going to work for me. Oh, looks like my inventory's full. Time to make some snow blocks. So, I'm back to Windows Movie Maker. I spent the last two days playing with uh, the RPG Maker software. I've been using the RPG Maker VX which is the successor to XP, which was, you know, XP for, like, Windows XP was designed specifically for the Windows client. Uh, but it's kind of like the stupid man's version, <laughs> I would say. It's it's less complicated and a little more user-friendly. And But I like it because it also has more of a traditional, old-school Final Fantasy feel to it. And by old-school, I mean, like, 1 through 4, not, like, 5 and 6. Because... Like, Final Fantasy VI was, like, an incredible leap, uh, graphically over five. even. It just had a very different visual power to it. Uh, they went with the whole steampunk look, and it just, it, the, everything was a little more detailed than the previous entries. So, it was, uh, it's, like I said, uh, Arbitrator VX is more six, and this is more four and five kind of look. It's not as bad as, like, one, two, and three. Uh, although I haven't actually... I can't remember the last time I saw a uh, an actual screenshot from the original three. Like I've seen the Game Boy version, but I don't know what the uh, the original version looked like. I can't. Re I've never played it, so I, I have no idea. I've only played the uh, I've only played as far as four, starting backwards. Anyways, so I started with seven, and I played eight, and then nine, and then the uh, anthologies and collection came out, and I played uh, uh, four, five, and six. So, it was fun. Uh, it's getting dark here, so I'm going to have to uh, create me a high hide and camp out for the night. And uh, once I get up there and get everything established, I'll just cut away and uh, we'll just come back on a brand new morning. I 
should just stick to what I know instead of trying out new software all the time. <laughs> Coincidentally, uh, every time I've ever had like some major, um, like major, I say majors, I've never had any like major, god the graphics, the uh, lighting and the chunks update so slow with fast running. Every time I've had a major, um, like spyware type infection problem with my PC, it's been because I was like installing new softwares that I was unfamiliar with. <laughs> oh well. Needless to say, I don't try. I don't mess with that anymore. Just, I, I try to avoid. Just stick to what I know. All right, let's go ahead and cut out. And yay, morning instantly. You didn't even see me change directions. <laughs> Come on, chunks. Update. I see a creeper, but everything else. When you're high enough like this, like I said, uh, you don't really get a lot of mobs. Uh, they're just not enough. You're just so high out of their view range, they don't swarm towards you. Uh, mobs only have a 16 block view range. Um, and I think it applies vertically as well. So if you're not within that 16 blocks, they don't see you. Like they have a, of course, I guess that's a 16 block cube. because It's not... I doubt the view ranges are spherical in this game. Everything's a cube. I don't know, it's possible. I have no idea. It could be a sphere. Let's collect some more. I'll spend the rest of the day here. Or not the whole day. I'm just going to collect enough. I have uh, one stack already. I want to get a full two stacks worth of snow and then I'll head back. Thankfully, this wasn't nearly as far a trip as the last one, so I'll actually be able to include the return voyage on this video. I wish I'd come this way the first time, then I could've already been to work. <laughs> Blocks. 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 So yeah, snowballs stacked to stick stacked snacked. Nah, 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 nah. Snowballs stacked 16 and uh then of course the blocks themselves snack snack snack. Why do I keep doing that? Stack. Stack <laughs> The snowballs stacked to 16 and the snow blocks stack to 64 like regular blocks. Uh, this is something interesting to discover. When you uh, take off a grouping of snow off a tree, it takes off like the whole grouping with one single swipe. But you only get one snowball for it. So I don't know if that's intentional or some sort of flaw in the coding or what. It might just be because tree, uh, tree leaves are transitory, like you can't collect them. Uh, I don't know, maybe that'll change once tree leaves become harvestable in the next update. I'll have to check that out and try that when that happens. Um, it's funny, the last few days now that uh, I've been, not been recording, uh, it's also been that the, uh, the friggin' um, uh, Minecraft forums have been down. They've, uh, the curse network that runs all their forums had some sort of, like, crazy major server malfunction and everything just went to hell in a handbasket for him so needless to say I, I this is why I uh, don't believe in allowing third-party entities to run your own systems because uh, like Minecraft forms have always gone down it's just something that happens because there's millions of Minecraft players uh, most of them are still pirates, unfortunately, but considering how game cheap, I wish people had bought it when it was really cheap, then it wouldn't have been such a bad deal. Like, now it's, like, more expensive, so. But it used to be, like, crazy cheap when it was originally an alpha, and, uh, it was, like, I got it for, like, 12 bucks, and it was, like, the best purchase I think I've ever made software-wise. And you can see, you can throw the snowballs. Uh, they do do damage, but it's like the equivalent of punching. It's not like, extreme damage. It would take quite a few hits the snowballs to take somebody down. I didn't even kill that chicken. It was that bad. I think punching's even more effective. So, go ahead and pick up my box here now that I've got a couple stacks. I'm going to head back home. Hello, box. Crafting box. Let's leave that hole in the tree. It doesn't matter. But uh, I've actually been, uh, like I said, I spent the last two days playing with uh, RPG Maker and uh, 
I've been learning some of the ins and outs of its system, and uh, I still don't understand its scripting language. Um, like, well, I do, but I don't. Like, I understand scripting in general. Like, I have enough mental, uh, mental, enough knowledge base to understand how uh, programming works. I'm just not fluent in the language enough to write programming. Like, I understand how ifs, ors, and ands, and elses, and all that kind of stuff, whiles, and I understand that kind of a programming setup. I understand the language of that, but I don't understand how to make it all fit together. Like my scripting knowledge base ended at um, RPG Maker 2's uh, systems, which was I forget. I think it might have been a Ruby-like system. Uh, I don't think it was exactly Ruby scripting the way uh, um, XP and VX are, but. Uh, it worked well enough, anyways. Die cow. Make my way back to the west. Until I hit the water, anyways. Oh, quite a drop there. <laughs> it's only noon. It's got plenty of time to get back. But uh, I've been playing. Around. I recently switched my uh, my tile set, my you know the default graphics the game uses, to uh, a new set that has a bit more fantasy feel to it. It's a little darker. It's a little more. I don't know. It's just it's a little it's a little less bright and cheery. Which it was kind of fine. Like the default system's fine if you just accept it at face value, of it being you know old school RPG looking. You know, it's very Dungeon Warrior, Dragon Warrior, whatever the, the game's called. The one developed by uh, Enix back before they became Square Enix. Um, there's my boat, and it's just you know it's kind of like the colors here in Minecraft. It's mostly kind of bright. And it works, it does its job, but I wanted a little bit of feel, but the arrangement of my new tile set is different, so now i got to go back and reapply tiles to the maps I'd already generated, and it's taking time, and I have to learn the system and reset pathing priorities, and over what tiles you can walk on, what tiles you can't walk on, and which ones you go behind, and, and I'm still learning kind of the ins and outs of how all the tiles fit together, because I'm not ultra familiar with the system, but... It's, it's, it's a good way to waste time. I mean, it puts better use of my skills as a, uh, as a wannabe artist than uh, playing MMOs ever did. <laughs> I can never get lost with that weird structure over there. It's so easily recognizable. Well, that and I maintain directionalities when I wander so that I can easily just turn back around and go the other direction. I may not always look it, but I always keep track of where I'm going. Like, I'll go off, but I keep track of what turns I make so that I can... Like, literally, I turn north, I'll turn back to the east, I'll turn south, I'll turn back to the east. You know, just to maintain the uh, directionality of my travel. I mean, I may vary, like, you know, a few blocks here and there, but for the most part, I always maintain directionality. To the point, like I said, I came into my boat today and I was like, you know... 15 blocks north of it instead of being right at it. So it could have been more ridiculous to try to find my way back. If you build a home that has a, a big enough structure to it that it's visible from a distance or you build, you know, I used to place markers in the sky. Like I would uh, climb up and uh, with dirt and stone uh, you know, just like I do with a high height. I'd take a pillar up and I would just collect what I need, take up what I needed and build something and then I'd build my way back down and then I would have my little notification. So, yeah, looks like we're coming to the end of this video. Uh, it's been a uh, fun couple days. I'm going to start out my new project to the north with my snow, but uh, that will be coming next video. So I will see you then. Goodbye.